Jonathan Winters as Charles Lindbergh, Al Capone, and Douglas Fairbanks. Good evening, flying fans from coast to coast. Waldo Winslow here. We're about to welcome one of America's great heroes, Mr. Charles Lindbergh who just returned from the first solo flight across the Atlantic Ocean. Lindy was greeted with a tremendous ticker tape parade here in New York, and he's just coming in now to talk to his admiring public over the magic of the airwaves. And here he is, Charles A. Lindbergh. Hello, how you doing? Oh, real fine. Well, it's real great to be here. I don't have a prepared speech. Uh, I think very possibly a tremendous thrill, uh, the ticker tape parade and everything. I'm all, all, almost speechless. And the fact, that, uh, the fact is that they didn't let me ride in no car. Uh, they, they made me walk from the battery all the way to Spite and Dival. Well, maybe I can loosen up if, if you don't mind. I call sure. you Lindy. Is it all right? Well, uh, everybody else has always called me Lindy. All right. Well, <laughs> Lindy! <laughs> Could you tell us what happened when you landed in, in Paris? Paris? Yeah. I came in. I made my final approach. <laughs> it took about oh, no more than six or 8,000 people with me. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought, surely, the plane was going to stop. And, uh, it just didn't, and uh, but they weren't hurt. They just kind of, you know, the Frenchmen. You can't hurt a Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> they got this, you know, little wine in them. Yeah. And so they fell down and were real good about it. And uh, as it as it, as it turned out, I taxied right uh, right right out of the airport and up in front of the hotel. And uh, I got out, and I must have had at least two dozen uh, escargot and uh, a lot of garlic. And then I stayed in my room until that wore off. And, uh, <laughs> Had some wine and uh, went downstairs and hung in the lobby until I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's lucky, what uh, that's I was... There it is. Lucky Lindy. <laughs> well, you know, America doesn't know too much about the real Charles Lindbergh. Now, you tell us about yourself and your hobbies. But, uh, one of my hobbies is I dream a lot. And I think that uh, I don't care what anybody says, aviation is going to play an important part in uh, the years to come. And what we're going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to get rid of the propeller. Uh, if it's going to take 33 hours to get to Paris, uh, people just aren't going to be interested. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to get something where you just go, are you listening, America? <laughs> <laughs> something that does that. I don't know what that is. Uh, we... uh, but at any rate, uh, I uh, my other hobbies, I pick flowers. I love flowers. And don't misinterpret what I've told you. I like flowers, and I like to arrange flowers. Um, I like, uh, I, I, I... Uh, you sure you're married? I, I, I knew you were going to start. And the guy in the hangar in San Diego gave me this jazz. And I put his head in my engine. And... And, and said, contact. <laughs> right now, he's all over San Diego. <laughs> I know, if you were to fly across the Atlantic again... Again? <laughs> and you were able to, to take a passenger with you, who would you take and why? We you, don't fight? Are you listening? <laughs> Are you listening, honey? Good. Good. She can't see us. Is we're on radio, are we, Waldo? Yes. That's who I'd take. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> but why? Who cares why? <laughs> Here it is, the Roaring Twenties. Crazy hats, cute co-eds, and college humor. 
over on the campus of Dimwitty University. There are only two things on the students' minds, books and girls, and not necessarily in that order. I'm sure glad the library was open, Freddy. Now I can spend a real exciting night studying. Oh, that's your trouble, Norman. You always got your nose in a book. You know something? Huh? Your nose is going to graduate two years before you do. <laughs> well, what's college for? Are you kidding? This is 1926. It's the jazz age. Flaming youth, short skirts, roll-down stockings, lipstick. Oh, no, no, you're going too far. You, you'll never get me to dress like that. Oh, no. <laughs> Forget studying. I got a couple of Shebas lined up for tonight. You mean girls? Yes, girls. Norman, come over here. Let me ask you something, Norman. When was the last time that you felt something warm and soft? Oh, this morning. No kidding! Yeah, I had a sweet roll for breakfast. I said, oh, Norman, Norman, don't you know anything about girls? I mean, didn't you ever play doctor when you were a kid? Of course. Of course? Of course. Of course. <laughs> Which one were you, the doctor or the patient? Oh, neither one. I was the one who visited the hospital after the operation. Oh, Norman. <laughs> Hiya, Margie. This is my roommate, Norman. He's going to be double dating with us tonight. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to study my history. Why study history tonight when you can make it? <laughs> Ma, you certainly are a brazen hussy. No, no, no. This is my date, Norman. Here comes your date now. <laughs> Are you? My name's Gladys. I'm a dancing daughter. Who my, are you? My name, my name is Norman. I'm a serious student. Nice to meet you, Norman. <laughs> nice to meet you, Gladys. Say, I haven't seen you around the campus. I guess I don't get around much anymore. <laughs> Tell me, Norman, do you like to dance? I don't know, Gladys. I never tried. <laughs> what class are you in? I'm a freshman. A freshman? Ooh! hope so. <laughs> Boy, I never got so tired just meeting someone. <laughs> smell this. Mm, that smells wonderful. What are you wearing? Rudolph Valentino, number five. <laughs> mm, that smells interesting. What are you wearing? Steptic pencil, number six. I cut myself shaving. <laughs> Say, Margie, you want to hear the latest knock-knock joke? Sure, kiddo. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ivan. Ivan who? I want to kiss you. <laughs> Do you know any knock, knock jokes? Sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Max. Max who? Max, no difference what you want. I'm not going to kiss you. Then I'll kiss you. <laughs> What's going on here? Shame on you. Becky, ah. right out here in public. You're supposed to be here to matriculate, not osculate. Oh, boy. <laughs> Golly. Gosh. Gee. You know you all are in trouble. Yes. What are we going to do? <laughs> Why don't you do what we do when we're in trouble? <laughs> Those raccoons are pops. Our pops, day young girl, and start to hurry her 
name is Dominic the Great, and I am the greatest knife thrower in the world. Yes. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to throw some nice Italian knife of you. The people up front are going to be fascinated. The one in the back is going to like it too. And now, I'd like to have my first volunteer from the audience. How about you, sir? Please come forth. I know me afraid. Come forth, sir. Yes, thank you so much uh, for trusting me, sir. Do I know you, sir? <laughs> he says, uh-huh. Oh, no. I never speak it to you before. No, you never speak it to me He before. says he never speak it to me before. You got a funny talk way you talk. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now going to... No, back, sir. Back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Knifus. Knife, sir? Yes. What is a knife, sir? Not you will. Nothing going to happen, sir. Okay. I am the greatest knife thrower in the world. Yes. If you don't believe me, it's my assistant. Visiting hours are from five to seven. <laughs> oh, why so sorry? Just tell the nurse Butterfingers sent you. I have just written a book, ladies and gentlemen, entitled The Art of Knife Throwing, or be careful, it's my heart. <laughs> Walk this away, sir. <laughs> to me. Thank you. And now I'm going to prove it that the knife we use is real. Excuse me, sir. Please hold the goats. <laughs> This is your Google chair. Yes. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eye on the knifers. And you keep your eye on the Google chair. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Just to stand right over here and don't be afraid. Trust me, sir. What makes you think I'm afraid? <laughs> Your eyes are green. Okay. Stay, sir. Stay. One, two, three. Oh! <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> don't be afraid, sir. Don't be afraid. Hey, ma. It, wait. Could you do me a favor? Yes, sir. Aim at my head. Because this is a new suit. Okay. Okay, sir. Don't you worry. Your life is in good hands. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll hurt you myself. I'll hurt you myself. And now, I'm going to do with the mirror. Mirror, mirror, oh, so bright. Let's have no accident tonight. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a poem, you know. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Two. Ladies and gentlemen. Don't be afraid, sir. Hey, look, buddy. Yes. My ambulance is double parked. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Please, please, come back. Staying right over here, sir. I'm now going to do it blindfolded. Hold! Oh, because I can't stay in the sight of blood. Oh, How come you always get to... Why can't I throw the knife? Well, wait a minute now. You want to throw, throw the knife. knife. Stop. 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 Okay, let me get this. You want me to stand over there and you want to throw the knives? I am a shoe. You sure? A shoe, I'm a shoe. <laughs> okay. All right, you give me the knife, I throw on you. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm going to stand over there and you're going to throw the knives when I say tree. Hey! You got to wait until I say tree. I got to wait until I say one, two, three. One, three. This man is crazy. <laughs> until I say, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put the cigarette in my mouth and he's going to cut the cigarette in half. When I say, <laughs> one, two, three. I say, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Start that court. Come on over here. I'm going to show you something nice. One, two, three. Oh, 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 If I thought it went right in. Oh, my
Rudy Wiffenpoof, broadcasting to you from the swanky French restaurant Le Club Sandwich, where Broadway meets 42nd Street to form a traffic jam. <laughs> As usual, the Rudy Wiffenpoof Radio Rondelay is brought to you by America's favorite breakfast cereal, Crackle Snap. <laughs> band and I would like to ask the musical question, Ain't We Got Fun? Every morning, every evening, ain't we got fun? How much money? Oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? This is gorgeous Fanny Frisbee. She was a former pom-pom girl. And they tell me she had the best ponds on the campus. <laughs> now, this is lovely Lula Laplanche. They tell me that Lula takes milk baths. And how she ever gets into that bottle, I'll never know. <laughs> now, this is lovely Zelda Zorina. Zelda Zorina goes to night school. And I hear that in sex education class, she's the final exam. <laughs> <laughs> time in between time. Whatever we've done, we sure had fun. And now, without further ado, we present to you, stepping up to the magical microphone, Tessie, Tilly, and the Toe Tappers, as they pose the musical puzzle, I Want to Be Bad. <laughs> Peruse your lips, shake your shoulders and twist your hips. Let a lady confess I want to be fair. If it's naughty to vamp the men, sleep each morning till after ten. Then the answer is yes, I want to be bad. This thing of being a good little goody is all very well. What can you do when you're loaded with plenty of hell? <laughs> What lips are for If it's naughty to ask for more Let a lady confess I want to be Scarface Al Capone is public enemy number one. 
Scarface is a busy man, but we were fortunate to get him in our studio today so all of you out there could meet him. And here he is, the most famous gangster of the Roaring Twenties, Scarface Al Capone. <laughs> Radio don't make a lot of difference, you know. You understand, but I have to give certain signals to my boys. Uh, and, uh, wait a minute, let me test this chair for wires or whatever, you know. Okay. Well, this is fine, sir. This is fine. So you're Waldo who? <laughs> Winslow. Waldo Winslow. Is that a makeup name or something? No, that's my regular name. Is that your regular name? Yes, sir. Get rid of it. <laughs> I'm yes. Al Capone. It's a pleasure to be here. I was told to say that. Well, uh, Mr. Capone, could you tell your radio fans how you happened to get that, excuse me, scar on your face? Ain't no scar on my face. I made about 55 trips to Switzerland here over the past five years, and things gone. <laughs> and, uh, one of them doctors over there, surgeon or something, took it out. Originally, it was a uh, chick I know, you know, in Elkhart, Indiana. Had a long nail and went like this. So I, uh, I give her a trip. People say that you're a, a killer and a murderer. What do you have to say about the, those accusations? Well, a man has got to protect himself. No. I have never actually killed a guy. I have had guys come at me from out of nowhere, the man blew up in front of me. Uh, a guy put his hand on my shoulder. Somebody grabbed him, choked him. This ain't my doing. Uh, one time I come out of a theater. I had forgotten, went back in to get some popcorn. They blew this guy across the park. Uh, so, you see, that's not my doing. Yeah, it's all mistakes. I am a guy that loves, I'm a great giver. Oh, yeah. Oh, you give. Listen, when I tell you I'm going to give it to you, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> well, we know what you mean, but, you know, everybody is familiar with uh, the St. Valentine's Day massacre. What does Valentine's Day mean? mean to you, sir? Well, you know, I was out of the country at the time there was the massacre. Same, same time I was out of the country when Custer got it. <laughs> I can't be in the country for all the massacres. <laughs> so, uh, Valentine's Day today, ladies and gentlemen, at a radio audience, wherever you are, besides your little boxes, Turning a cheaper dial. <laughs> Valentine is from the heart, you know? It's a little cherub, Cupid. <clears throat> and that little arrow comes in, you're in love. Valentine's Day is a time for not only cards and letters, for chocolate. So your face break out. You're so full of <laughs> it's pitiful. <laughs> Now, Big Al, I hear that your automobile costs over $30,000. What makes it so expensive? <laughs> Keep your hands off me. I don't need this nonsense from you. I've been faking it. Get in my car and go for a ride. I won't hurt you. I just have a rubber gun. All right, I hear that uh, your automobile cost over $30,000. What makes it so expensive? Well, you know, a lot of guys ask me that. A lot of boys and girls, a lot of chicks. Say, hey, how can you drive a $30,000 car? You know why it's so expensive? What? Maintenance. <laughs> Can't go two blocks, my windows aren't blown out.
Chicago in town. Chicago, Chicago, we'll show you around. You'll love it. Bet you about a dollar you lose the blues in Chicago, Chicago. The town that Billy Sunday could not shut down. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say. Prohibition? <laughs> Are you all for illegal booze? <laughs> That's what I like to hear. It may be dry outside, but it's high tide in here. Have a good time! <laughs> Don't worry about the cops raiding the joint. Most of them are here drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you're real lucky tonight. Appearing with us is the secret owner of this speakeasy, one of the top mobsters of Chicago. Let's hear it for Big Louie Moran! Okay, everybody have a good time. <laughs> Mr. Big Louie, I can't accept this pearl necklace you gave me. Oh, why not, kid? My mother said I shouldn't accept gifts from a man without the benefit of a marriage. I'm married. Oh, then I guess it's all right. <laughs> now that we've settled that, how about going out with me tonight after the show? I can't, Mr. Louie. I have to go home and tell my mother we're giving her a surprise birthday party tomorrow night. Why tell her tonight? She hates surprises. That makes a lot of sense. Look, kiddo, I'm crazy about you. How about being my girl? That wouldn't be right, Mr. Louie. And besides, I hear you're involved in a lot of illegal enterprises. Says who? Well, how come you make millions of dollars from a little nightclub like this? Well, when we sweep up at night, we find a lot of loose change. <laughs> Look, be my girl and I'll make you a star. I don't want to be a star, Mr. Louie. I just took this job to earn enough money to go to college. I'll buy you a college. And then I want a career. I'll buy you a career. And then I want to settle down and have kids. I'll buy you a kid. Well, thanks, Mr. Louie. You've done enough for me already. Well, you can't blame a man for trying. Good luck to your kid, and I hope you think a lot of me once in a while. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Louie. I have plenty of room in my head. I'll go along with that. Boss, the federal agents are outside. You mean, you mean Elliot Mess? I don't nobody move. This is a raid. <laughs> Let me stop. So this is what uh, a liquor joint looks like, huh? Oh, hey, you got a lot of nerve coming here like this, mess. I got a good mind to give you the kiss of death. <sighs> Lips that touch liquor shall never touch mine. What do you mean? <laughs> this stuff here, this stuff is coffee. That's coffee? Yeah. From here, I can tell you, this is bathtub gin. How can you tell? Well, it's got a ring around the cup. <laughs> oh, look, Mass, relax a little. Have a drink. A drink? Me? Perish the fuck. 
Oh, I, get, I get drunk on rum cake. Yeah. yeah. Don't you know that liquor can poison you? Says who? Says the government. <laughs> the government, you know what they did in their laboratory? What? They put a worm in a glass of liquor and it died. <laughs> now, doesn't that prove something to you? Yeah, it means if you drink, you won't get worms. <laughs> I never thought of that. <laughs> but we've got to get rid of all this booze. Oh. For your own good. Oh. I'm taking the liquor away for your own good. You're all better off without that demon Ron. <laughs> you wake up in the morning clear-eyed, no hangover, and without that horrible taste in your mouth, just like me. Yeah, that's easy for you to say. That's what you think. <laughs> all right, Big Louie. You're under arrest. Oh, come on. Give me a break, will you? I've been thinking of retiring anyway. I got, I got, my feet are killing me. I, I, I got lumbago, high blood pressure, indigestion, heartburn. I got so many ailments, doctors have to make an appointment to see me. You're really in trouble this time, Big Louie. You're right. What am I going to do? Why don't you do what we do when we're in trouble? <laughs> stars, the romantic dream of millions of moviegoers, Hollywood's heartthrob, <laughs> Douglas Fairbanks. The, the greatest lovers on the screen are uh, Rudolph Valentino, Raymond Navarro, Ricardo Cortez, and you. 
How do you compare yourself with uh, them as a lover? I thought, uh, first off, that was worded badly on your part. You put me forth. <laughs> yeah. now, as a screen lover, what goes through your mind when you're playing a love scene? What do you think about? Oh, when good. you have a girl in your arms, what, what do you think about? Been... Actually making love to you? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> I think you have to be very careful that there are grips all around and uh, that their stage hands. There's a bit of an audience, people from Muncie uh, that have gotten off a bus. Uh, there are people uh, that are on the lights, you see, the brutes, as we have batteries now. So this, this power of concentration is rather ticklish. And then you know that you can't do really what you want to do, <laughs> so that in essence, you see, the bloody picture is a bomb. <laughs> oh, it's not believable. So therefore, you can't touch this person. You're constantly doing this, really. Perhaps doing that, hoping not to get the wax from your ears. And uh, then you hold on to her, you kiss her, and you do, you know, fall in love. Momentarily. And then, of course, the lights go up and a person says, that's a wrap. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that means, that means it's a break for the day, and you're left there. <laughs> I hear you've had a lot of trouble uh, with the studio over your salary. Exactly how much do you make? I think that's a very... I didn't want to say rude. Uh, how much do you make here, Waldo, for this, this read? Ridiculous show that you do. Sitting here in the same bloody bow tie, introducing eight to fifteen people, the same bloody hat, the same blue suit. What? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, I wasn't going to tell you anything. <laughs> it's not me that they want to hear about, it's you, Mr. Fairbanks. But if I tell them, they'll hate me. But you're not going to make it anymore. You're over the hill. It's kaput for you. They want to know what you did make. Talkies are coming in. And you talk way up like a girl. That's no good. You got to get down low. Get down, man. Get on it. You know it's over with. Yes, it is. <laughs>
give you anything but love Baby, that's the only thing I'll think of Oh, baby, you dream a while and scheme a while You're sure to find happiness and a guess All the things that you think that are fine for you Gee, I'd like to see you look as swell Baby, diamond bracelets, Woolworth ain't gonna sell to you, baby Till that lucky day in a dawn Well, baby, well, I can't give you anything but love I'm so very diggy diggy do by nature. If you don't say diggy diggy do to your mate, you're gonna lose a couple of letters. And dynamite. There's nothing but that at night. Baggy, daggy, saggy, where the fellas do the baggy and the women wacky, wacky, woo. You get a drama, you get a drama, then you trouble the free. Now it's time to fall in love My honest advice is 
keep these current prices. Now you're talking for in love. If the girl you want just won't give you a tumble, she'll be different when you're riding in a rumble. Married life is so pleasing, a night when it's freezing, and now they're trying to fall in love. Our cares and troubles are gone. 